morning and welcome to our Spirit of Unity Sunday service as we progress through our Corona confinement. I hope you've been enjoying our time together every day and especially on Sunday when we come away from all the stresses and all the concerns of the day to focus on something that is true. And it's more true than whatever the scary, tough things out there in the world are. And that is that life is meant to be good. That everything created was meant to be good. And I invite you to hold that thought today as we do our Sunday service together. Doesn't matter where you are, doesn't matter what time it is, because in time, that's something that humans created, not God. So if we take a few minutes and we uh, acknowledge the one presence and one power in the universe and in our lives, God, the good, amen. Before we get into our service today, I would like to uh, point out that today is National Scavenger Hunt Day. Boy, that sounds like fun, doesn't it? Do you think you can do it by yourself? You can, you know. They actually did that with my great-grandson on a video class where they would have the kids, you know, they'd give them something to go find and the kids would go find it. So. What might you scavenger hunt for today? Maybe you could call kids or grandkids or whatever and see what you can get them to hunt down. Whatever, scavenger hunts are fun. Another thing that it is today is National Escargot Day. I'm skipping that one. Not only am I a vegetarian, but even if I weren't, escargot does not appeal to my thoughts. It is also National Aviation Maintenance Technologist Day. Well, I'm all for, for keeping them in thoughts and thanking them for the hard work they do because I do love to fly. And when I love to fly, I know I want to know that somebody was taking care of that plane and maintaining it. And most of all today, it is Brother's Day. So if you have a brother, make sure you tell him today that you're thinking of him and that you love him. Whether he's on this side or beyond the veil, it doesn't matter because we are always one in truth. All right, and so we begin our service. For anyone watching who doesn't know me, my name is Reverend Alicia Leslie and I am a minister of Spirit of Unity Church, which once had a physical location, and then I brought it to the world. And that's what I do now as we have our cyber services and the inspirational messages I send by email. I'm pretty glad for technology because there's so much you can do with it. My next step is probably going to be trying to find a way to um, use Zoom uh, for church. I just haven't gotten there yet, but know that I'm working on that. Unity is a non-denominational uh, church of practical Christianity, and we do behold uh, all faiths for having um, the one, we're all connected through the one belief. We say, I say, there are many paths to one God, and we may be on different paths, but we're all working in the same direction. We're going to honor and think about that today. The scripture that I would like to start uh, with is from Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Now, to... Um, to uh, interpret that, what it's saying is that we are pressing on and lifting ourselves up to the call 
that call that we all have for a more beautiful expression of life, for the expression of good in every form. And so we hold that in our thoughts as we look at the theme for today, which is the power of pressing on. We do press on. To press on is to keep moving forward no matter what. You know, there is a story about a man who one day was just kind of standing out in a field and, and there was a great big rock and God spoke to him and God said, son, I want you to push that rock. Push it as hard as you can. And so the man said, okay, I'll push. And he pushed and he pushed and he pushed. But as hard as he pushed, that rock wouldn't budge. And then God came back to him and said, how you doing? And he said, oh God, I am so sorry. I have done my best. I have pushed and pushed this rock, but I cannot make it budge. And God said, I didn't ask you to move the rock. I asked you to push it. You did exactly what you were supposed to do. I think for us, sometimes the important thing is to just keep pushing, whether we see or feel we are making any progress or not. And that's what pressing on means. And it's difficult. It's difficult today. You know, today the New York Times had, uh, I think their front cover, their newspaper, had the names of 1,000 of the people with a brief little quip about them underneath that someone might understand who that person was, what they were like. They did 1,000 names on the cover of the newspaper. And I thought about that. Just about 100,000 people have died from the coronavirus. That means you would have to take that 1,000, that front page of the New York Times with 1,000 names on it for 100 days to acknowledge every person. Now I'm sharing that with you so you get an idea of the size, the number of people that we're talking about and how hard it is to stay positive and upbeat and believing something good is going to come out of this when we look at those figures. But what are we called to do? We're called to press on no matter what. Remember, it's about the survival of the ones with the ability to adapt. Not the fittest, like some people said. Darwin actually said, survival is for those with the ability to adapt. We see people pressing on through these difficult times and adapting in all different kinds of situations. Restaurants that have takeout only. Uh, my son works at a, um, one of my sons works at a, uh, it's a, a bike, bike repair motorcycle, uh, repair jet skis, stuff like that. And they have only curbside service. You tell us what's wrong, drop off your vehicle, you know, it's sanitized before you get it, and it's sanitized when you come curbside to pick it up. Things can keep going. So for everybody who is out there that's concerned and worried, take your angst, and I invite you to turn it into action. Find a way to press on through it that when you start to feel worried or depressed or sad, keep pressing on. Oh yes, take care of yourself, but do press on no matter what. We have a big job ahead of us and we may feel overwhelmed. And what I'm going to tell you might not seem like the most 
uh, inspirational or positive thing in the world, but I'm going to invite you to try to see it that way. In seminary, we studied scriptures and we learned that no matter what happened, God always left a remnant. God always left someone to push out, to survive, to come through whatever befell them and start again. And this is our opportunity to start again. I was reading in my, uh, my Unity book this morning, Foundations of Unity, where it said that true faith is believing to the point of action. What does that mean? That means if you've been praying for rain, it'd be a good idea to bring an umbrella with you, wouldn't it? Let's move on. Let's press on expecting good to come, expecting that we are going to come out of this better than ever. And the uh, someone posted the other day about um, just to get about it and get back to normal. And I thought about it and I said, well, you know, normal might have seemed easier but it wasn't as cracked up. All it was cracked up to be by us, we can have better than normal. And we will get that as we press on and don't allow ourselves to become overwhelmed. All we are going through right now as individuals and as a collective is a part of our healing and transformation process. You know, all the fears, all the doubts, all the concerns, all the anger, all the angst is down in our lower consciousness. And we can get out of that. And we're going to be doing that in a couple of minutes in a little meditation. But what we have to know is that our aggravation, our pain, all of that is coming up for healing. Any way that you are frustrated or uncomfortable has come up for healing. It didn't come because it's killing you. It did it because it's bringing us all new life. And I want you to know that. Sometimes when we're being our really human self, it's hard to see a greater truth. We have to think above our little self to think above. You know how it said in the scripture about, um, about the call, the upward call of God in Christ Jesus? You know, in the beginning of the New Testament, it always referred to Jesus Christ. And then after the resurrection, Jesus was referred to as Christ Jesus. And I believe that each one of us is working on creating our spiritual perfection, which we call Christ, the Christ within. And some like the, I think the Buddhist faith calls it, uh, that they come to the point of uh, nirvana, to uh, complete spiritual evolution. And that's what we're all working on. But we've got to heal and get over our stuff. I'm going to tell you a story about it. It's kind of an embarrassing story to tell because you would think that I would be smarter than that <laughs> over 30 years in unity and oh, almost 30 years as, a, as a, an ordained minister. Um, but I am still working out my stuff. If I worked it all out, my friends, I don't think I'd be here. I think I'd have risen above it. So this is what happened. Last night, I went around the campground. I When I... I don't, didn't go around the campground. I usually go around the campground and visit campfires and read my campfire stories. Well, I'm social distancing and self-isolating, and I couldn't do that. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to take a chance because I figured God gave me a brain for a reason, right? So I decided I would go Facebook Live like I am today with doing my story. So I notified all the folks in the campground, if they wanted a campfire story, to tune in to um, 
to my video that I was putting up on the campground website, uh, not website, Facebook page. So I started reading the story and I was a little bit nervous about it. It was a brand new story and I wasn't looking at the people and couldn't gauge their responses to what I was saying. Well, you know, on Facebook, when you make comments, they pop up and you, I, you know, the, the one who's doing the video can see them, although can't necessarily read them or read them well. So as this comment popped out, um, it disturbed me because it made me think I had offended someone. And I thought, oh my gosh, something in my story rubbed them the wrong way. But I reminded myself, you don't even know what it said. You saw a couple of words that made you think it was you. So but don't do that. Keep reading. And I took a breath and I kept reading. And I'm pretty sure if you saw that video, which you can still see for about another half hour um, on Grandview Camping's uh, page on uh, Facebook, if you see it, you won't tell where that moment of horror hit me. But here's the deal. After I was done telling the story, I looked up the, the comments. And what the comment was, was, I'm so sorry we couldn't be there. You know, they couldn't make it to the campground because the person had been exposed to COVID. And we have a waiver that says if you've been exposed, you can't come. And so they were also, they were, you know, uh, self-isolating or whatever they call it. And so they couldn't be here with us. So I had this big snit that I had, you know, maybe I said something. Well, that's what came up for my healing. By the grace of God, I know better than to let that stuff get to me right away. If I had offended the person, the best thing you do is apologize and make amends because that's how we know it's not going to bother us ever again. So I invite you when you have little things of your humanness come up to know it's coming up for healing. So then only ask, say, dear God, reveal that which is to be revealed. Heal that which is to be healed. And we'll know what we need to work on. It's really simple. And as we grow, we press on more and more to expressing. That's what that word means. Express means to press into manifestation. Let's press into manifestation, the wonderful world as we would like it to be, the beyond normal. And if we feel like we're not getting anywhere, remember the man who pushed the rock. God didn't ask you to move it, just keep pushing it. In pushing it alone, you will be strong and we will be a part of a great new world. Now I'd like to just take a moment for a quick meditation. I invite you to just take a few deep breaths. They're called deep cleansing breaths because as you breathe in deeply and fully, you'll find that your brain gets a rest. You can't think. And then you exhale. And breathe in all good. And release all negative. And as we have lifted our consciousness, feel yourself lifting away, coming higher and higher away from all the worries to that land beyond, beyond, to the world past hope and fear, where only love and peace and wholeness appear. This is the truth of our being. Embrace that feeling. And 
again, breathe, release and let go, and let God bring forth a beautiful day for your life. Know that I so appreciate you being with me today. If you happen to pop in late, just hang on a couple of minutes and you can watch it from the beginning. And have a wonderful day and know that I love you, I bless you, I appreciate you, and I behold the divinity in you.